I had a lab, okay, mm -hmm. in my house, which consisted of an old packing box. I put shelves in there, I had a storage battery in there, and I had a lamp bank. You know what a lamp bank is? A bunch of switches that you put different bulbs in series with the AC circuit so you get different amounts of power. How did you get a hold of something like that? I made everything. Oh. That wasn't... Well, bulbs, you go down yeah. to 5 and 10, and you get sockets yeah. that you could screw down to a wooden base. You yeah. could screw them down, you connect them with pieces of wire called another K wire for bells, and you use that to call wire. what? Annunciator, or another K wire, or something huh. like that, for bells. Huh. And you use that to connect those things together. Well, first you have to work out the circuit that you want. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I made a circuit with some switches, five switches and five bulbs in such a way that by making different combinations of switches, I could put them in series or parallel in different combinations and thought yeah. I would get different voltages. Right. What I hadn't realized was that the bulb's resistance depends on its temperature and how much current therefore is going through it. They aren't standard resistors. I calculated the resistance of each bulb from the power, like a 100 watt bulb for, say, 100 volts is one amp, therefore it's one hundredth of an ohm. But it isn't, it's less, because when it's running not so much current through it, it hasn't got so much resistance, it's not so hot. I didn't know that, so the results of the stuff that came out wasn't as easily adjusted correctly, but it was all right. The bulb used to glow when they were in the series. It's very pretty. They look pretty. They're all half lit, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a switchboard on the top so with these switches, and uh, it had a battery, a storage battery, so there was DC plugged on one side, the AC with the adjustable switches the other side, and then I had a fuse in the system. So if I shorted anything, it would blow out. Now, I had to have a fuse that was weaker than the fuse in the house. So I made my own fuses by taking tin foil and wrapping them around an old fuse and screwing it in. And that would go easier. The tin foil went easier than the stuff they had. And then across the fuse, I had a 5-watt bulb. So when the fuse blew out, the load would light the bulb. Momentarily. No, I always no. had the load on because I had a trickle charger, they called it. There was always a little load on the line for the trickle charger that was charging the storage battery. So when the fuse would blow, there'd always be a little load, and the 5-watt bulb would light up. And that was on the switchboard behind a piece of candy paper. You know that brown paper you get from a piece of candy? If you look with lights behind, it looks red. And so I could always tell if the fuse was gone. If something went off, I'd look up the switchboard, there would be a red spot from where the fuse went. It was fun. Right. Yeah, I had all kinds of little things. I had a lot of tools and so forth, and electric motors. and I didn't build a lot of radio. I tried to build a radio, but I used not well insulated wire or something, it never worked. Uh, I built an amplifier for a photo cell that I bought, and I could make it ring a bell when I put my hand in front, but that's about it. Mm. I didn't do a great deal. It sounds as if you were inside for most of your time, you weren't out in the street Well, I was, playing my mother kept putting me out all the time playing, but I was often in the house fiddling with my lad. Yeah. yeah. And I used to cook fried potatoes all the time. I had a heater and I put fat and I made French fried potatoes. <laughs> but I also did experiments. One day, I was in the house and I looked up at the laboratory there and there's a flame, like a candle flame, running right along the wire. This insulated wire that I was talking about was covered with some cloth and then waxed. And this light is running right along the wire. What happened was there was some corrosion from the storage battery or something that started a flame, and it was and I was in the room, thank God, you know? And I saw it, and I put it out, and so oh, by the time I got it out, it was a lot of wire burned out, and uh, I had to do a lot more circuit work and fix things up, but nobody knew about that. Another time I had a fire, but this was another fire of a different kind. I had, oh, I forgot, I also had a Ford coil, a spark coil, you know, a Ford automobile, to make the sparks go inside, I had an induction coil that made a high voltage. And so I had spark turtles at the top of my switchboard. I'd switch in my little spark gadget, the spark would operate, and I would be able to light a piece of paper. If you put a piece of paper in, it makes holes, or maybe even burn some paper to make an experiment. So one day I was doing it, and I got the paper lit from the spark. And I was holding the thing, and I couldn't hold it anymore because it was burning in my fingers, and I dropped it into a wastebasket, a metal wastebasket, but the wastebasket had a lot of newspapers in it. So the newspapers go fast, you know, and the flame gets very big inside the room. A great big newspaper fire inside the room in a wastebasket. So I grabbed a pair of pliers to hold the wastepaper basket because it's hot, and I carried it and held it out the window. We were on about the third floor. 
Then I began to think, well, I can put it out easy enough. I'll put a magazine over the top of it and smother it. But I didn't think of that fast enough, and the magazine isn't quite in reach. So I start to go over to get the magazine and start pulling it back in through the window. And I see there are curtains in the window. See, by the way, I'm holding this flaming thing out the window. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Everybody sees it. Is it? And I can't reach the magazine, but I just made it. I got the magazine, but I'm almost burning the curtains. You see. And then I put the magazine over, and it went out all night. Okay? But then I went to take the magazine off. Oh, I think I brought it in. When I take the magazine off, the room filled with smoke, so I quickly put it outside. I went all out smoke. By the way, the first thing I did was close the door because my mother had some friends over playing bridge in the living room, ladies. So I closed the door before I started doing anything. When I dropped the paper in, I saw what was happening. I closed the door. Then I got the thing out and I had to put it out the window again. Then I took the cover off to let the smoke go. But now, because it was out the window, it was a little bit windy. And the wind would go in and light it again. See, so I kind of put it out and I kind of shook the things and the ashes flew all over little bits glowing coal. It was very dangerous. <laughs> but anyway, fortunately, it didn't start any other fires and all the coals went away. And I opened the windows and let the air take the smoke out. But before that, I went out through the door and I said, goodbye, I've gone out. And I went out to play while the smoke went out slowly through the window. <laughs> As it reminded you of the story, going out to play. Yeah. <laughs> so that was by fire, which fortunately didn't get.